I played Terraria, but every naturally generated chest has absolutely random loot. Meaning that when I open a chest, it can have anything from a few dirt blocks and some grass seeds to a full set of solar armor and a Terrarian if I'm lucky enough. Will I be able to beat the game or is luck not on my side today? Well, let's find oh out. As always, I started the playthrough by chopping down some trees and heading to the right side of the world in hopes of finding some chests. I ended up taking fall damage and I died. But that's alright because we got back up on our feet and headed to the left side of the world. I thought it'd be a good idea to explore the sand biome as that usually has a lot of chests, but as you can see, I got absolutely obliterated. I was getting pretty frustrated because I couldn't find any chests, so I said, hey, why not dig down? Let's make a elevator. That's going to be a really easy, surefire way to get chests. Once again, we died, but I wasn't going to give up this easily. We made our way back down again and I actually found a golden chest. This was our very first chest, so let's open it and see what we have. This didn't provide us with too many items, but look, we got a decent hook and a wooden sword. Since we were already underground, I saw this as my opportunity to make our way further into the cave and we actually stumbled upon another chest. I opened this chest and it actually ended up containing some pretty decent gear. We got a gungner and a heat ray. I continued to mine out the elevator in search of more chests. Along the way, I picked up some life crystals to increase our health and stumbled upon another chest. Once again, this wasn't anything special, just more vanity items and building materials. I continued to dig down and I found another chest near the underworld which gave us a mana sword and oracalcum headgear. After all that, I made my way further to the the underworld, fell into lava, and expectedly died fairly quickly. I made my way down in the corruption biome and actually found a golden chest that contained over 200 Eye of Cthulhu treasure bags. I spammed the treasure bags until I got a good modifier on the Shield of Cthulhu and proceeded to throw the rest out into the garbage. So far, we haven't been too lucky with the loot, but remember, we still have lots of time. We haven't even defeated our first boss. I essentially spent the next few days within the mines, farming for life crystals as we needed to get our health up if we wanted to do any damage against the hard mode bosses. While exploring the right of the world actually got really lucky as there were a few chests situated in very close proximity to one another. It gave me pretty decent weapons such as the Nimbus Rod, it gave me a Spectre Pickaxe, the Breaker Blade, and the Razor Blade Typhoon. I decided to move on to fighting Skeletron as we were definitely strong enough and I really don't want to wait until next night to fight him. After Skeletron was defeated, I made my way into the dungeon. As remember, every chest has random loot. And what areas in a Terraria world have the most chests? That's right, Skeletron's dungeon. I only got a couple of keys before I teleported back home but from these couple of keys we got some pretty neat accessories like the jellyfish diving gear and a better hook. I teleported back home and remembered that the sky islands actually had chests as well. After opening one of the sky island chests I found a beetle helmet, some decent yo-yos, buff items, and some pretty cool looking vanity. I decided to keep on making my way to the right in search of another sky island and that's exactly what we found. The next sky island chest had absolutely garbage loot. Look at this, it had a greater healing potion and that's about it. After this my gravitation potion ran out but I was already on the right side of the world so I decided hey why not check out the ocean chests well that's exactly what I did and you won't believe what I found. When opening the ocean chest, I found the Eye of Cthulhu yo-yo as well as a Daybreak, which are both absolutely phenomenal pre-Moon Lord weapons. Luck was definitely on our side this playthrough. I ended up organizing my chests a bit and went back into finishing the elevator we started. I came across a few more chests which just gave us some better accessories, but our main goal was to get into hard mode right now. I actually already had a guide voodoo doll on me because I found it in one of the chests, so all I had to do was come down to the underworld and just throw into the just like that, the wall of flesh was summoned in and defeated in mere seconds. We were now into hard mode. Within the jungle, I actually ended up finding a lava charm and a solar pickaxe, which was an amazing upgrade to our specter pickaxe. I continued searching the jungle for loot, but I didn't really find anything too interesting. I found a ton of heart crystals on a chest so we could max out our health, but aside from that, we didn't get anything too good. I ended up getting over 700 expert mode destroyer bags, but I couldn't really put that to use. All of our weapons, all of our accessories, all of our armor was so much past that stage of the game. I went to go break some demon altars because we needed the hard mode ores in our world just to craft a oracalcum anvil so we can make the mechanical bosses. I ended up farming out some oracalcum, made the anvil, and we were now on our way to grinding out the mechanical bosses. We went to the dungeon to acquire more bones for Skeletron Prime. I came back to the surface, crafted the mechanical skull, and finished off Skeletron Prime as fast as I could before it turned daytime. After Skeletron Prime, the next two bosses we had left on our list was the Destroyer and the Twins. Now see, I had more souls of night and light than I knew what to do with, but our main struggle was actually getting the lenses and the rotten chunks to craft the Destroyer and the Twins. Once I farmed out enough rotten chunks, I crafted the mechanical worm. I actually went to the left side of the world to search the ocean chest so 
over there and I stumbled upon the Terrarian. This time it wasn't a joke. I actually got the real weapon. I didn't get no April Fool's joke. Along with this, we got over a hundred Moon Lord Expert Mode bags, which gives us essentially all the loot we ever need to finish the rest of the game. Now, all we have to do is just grind out boss summons. I opened up a bunch of the Moon Lord bags, got myself a Meowmer with the best modifier, and waited for it to turn to nighttime. Once it was nighttime, I summoned in the Destroyer and spammed the Star Wrath on it, which took him out extremely quickly. While it was still nighttime, I thought this is my opportunity to farm out Demon Eyes, just so we can get enough lenses and craft the twins. Once I acquired enough lenses, I went back to spawn, crafted the mechanical eye, and took out the twins using the Terrarian. With all three mechanical bosses being defeated, we can now head over to the jungle and try to find Plantera's Bulb. Now while searching for Plantera's Bulb, I actually stumbled upon the jungle temple, and since I already had the key to it because I found it in a chest earlier, I decided that we should just explore the temple first. Now usually in the temple chests, you will find the lizard power cell, which you can use to summon in Golem. But since every single chest is random, I could not come across a single lizard power cell, which means, yes, I had to farm for absolutely hours. I kid you not, I spent hours in front of my screen just to get a single lizard power cell. After giving up on that, I decided, hey, we should just fight Plantera first. Why are we skipping to Golem right away? I'm pretty sure we weren't even able to summon Golem without fighting Plantera first. So let's do all the bosses in order. During this time, I summoned in the Queen Bee by accident, killed it pretty quickly. And while I was making my way up and out of the jungle, I surprisingly found Plantera's bulb. We used the power of the Terrarian and the Star Wrath to absolutely shred through Plantera's health. And now we were ready to go and fight Golem. I once again made my way into the temple and I died. But that's nothing to cry about as I made my way all the way back to the jungle and this time I decided to farm for the lizard power cell once again. After what felt like a million years I finally got the lizard power cell. I picked up golem's altar as we had a solar pickaxe so we could mine it and I brought it over to spawn so we could fight it in the comfort of our own home. We ended up beating golem without any problems whatsoever and our next logical thing to do was go fight the lunatic cultist. We were definitely powerful enough and it's not like we have anything better to do anyways. We defeated the lunatic cultist quite quickly and now came time for my favorite part. The pillars of course. Now see I have a love-hate relationship with the pillars. They love killing me and I hate doing them. I kept dying over and over and over again. The solar pillar was absolutely tragic. I can't explain in how much pain I was but we got through all of them and I thought I was ready to fight the moon lord. A little did Boyo know he was gonna have an absolutely awful awful time. I ended up building a few houses before the moon lord spawned so I can get the nurse to move in of course because we need to cheese the moon lord because I'm way too bad to do it the traditional way. Little did I know how much I was gonna suffer during this playthrough. We got Moon Lord pretty low. We took out one hand, we took out the other hand, and I got absolutely decimated by his eyeball minion things. Okay, those hands that I took out absolutely shredded through my health. I had no chance. I tried to make my way into the house to heal with the nurse and they kept on spamming me. I died once, but that's alright. I decided this time I'm gonna get a full set of solar armor by doing the pillars again and because we had a ton of luminite from the Moonlord expert mode bags and try out Moonlord one more time. This time I planned it out much smarter. I ended up using a portal gun to teleport between me and the nurse, so if I needed to heal, all I had to do was hop into the portal and that was it. Somehow, being the idiot I am, this didn't work out whatsoever. I tried to teleport to the nurse and as I teleported to her, she was blocked by the Merchant. I tried to heal and I kept on clicking shop with the merchant. This, of course, costed me the entire run, which pissed me off beyond comprehension. For my third attempt, I decided to make an actual house for the nurse so the eyeballs couldn't push me around and there was no merchant to distract me. You want to see how this turned out? Let me tell you a secret. This didn't turn out too well either because look what happened. The nurse teleported back to the house, made it 20 million times harder for me to actually go to her, and I ended up dying. I summoned the Moon Lord again, did the exact same thing, tried my best to dodge, got him super super low, we were actually on his core, and I ended up dying. By this point, I was so pissed. You guys don't even get it. I have full solar armor, a terrarian, I have post moon lord gear, post moon lord accessories, post moon lord weapons, and I can't defeat moon lord. This is how you know I am horrible at the game. I'm gonna be totally open with you guys. I just went into god mode and beat the moon lord because I didn't put all my attempts on screen, but I tried a solid 10 times over and over and over again. And by the time I reached three hours, of playtime just trying to beat the moon lord i just gave up i have videos to make i have videos to edit and there was no way i was gonna spend hours of my time trying to beat this 
stupid boss. Sincerely, I hate the Moon Lord. But you know what? With the slight assistance of God mode, we ended up beating the Moon Lord. I don't think I'm ever gonna fight this boss ever again. You guys don't even know the hate I have towards Moon Lord. He costed me so many hours of my time. If you enjoyed the video, consider checking out another one on screen. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Be sure to join our Discord in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I'll see you next time. Peace out.